My, what big rims you have. My, what bright eyes you have. Oh. All the better to tease you with, my dear. That was good. Where to? Get ready to spin your own tail. Introducing an all new crossover Toyota CHR. Toyota, let's go places. South Carolina leads the conference trying to remain unbeaten. Vanderbilt trying to stay in contention for a top six spot to avoid the play in round in the SEC tournament. Alongside a former All America goalkeeper, Jill Lloyden, I'm Jonathan Yardley. Glad to have you with us in Columbia for a game, Jill, that we're looking forward to. South Carolina has been a standard setter in the SEC, but Vanderbilt's trying to reach that, and in some ways they're applying that same formula that South Carolina's used. Well, Jonathan, I'm so excited for tonight's matchup. Two teams who historically in the last five years, it's come down to the last seconds of yeah. the game to see who wins. Both teams playing the same formation, same styles of soccer, and same kinds of players on the field, so we should expect a really close matchup tonight. Those similarities extend to having an iconic forward up top for Vanderbilt. It's Simone Charlie, a track star and a soccer star, one of their greats. Simone Charlie's been great. Statistically, she's only had three goals and five assists, but she has been a creator. You cannot give her time and space on the ball. For South Carolina, Savannah McCaskill doesn't have the goal numbers to match last season when she had 17, but she's at the heart of everything for the Gamecocks. Savannah McCaskill is the heart and soul of this team. She can take two, three players on. Her deliveries are great. And as you can see here, you cannot give this player a sniff anywhere on the field, and especially in the box, because she will punish you. That was South Carolina's game winner against Arkansas last week. They've won 18 straight in the regular season in the SEC. McCaskill third in the NCAA among active players with 106 career points. Simone Charlie right there with her as well. We'll see who will join them in the starting lineup. Might be a couple surprises on the Vanderbilt side. And we'll kick when we come back. South Carolina and Vanderbilt headed your way next.
South Carolina State Fair going on just a few minutes away from Stone Stadium where South Carolina is hosting Vanderbilt this evening. The starting lineup for the Commodores, a few changes, Eberts and Simmons on the left and Myra Conte Jill in the middle. Conte, this is a big surprise for us, but look for her to put a lot of pressure on that South Carolina back line so they cannot initiate play. On the South Carolina side, they're still without Jackie Schaefer due to a concussion and Savannah McCaskill is going to be looking for Alexa Barr. McCaskill, sometimes she pulls out wide Alexa Barr that creates pockets and scenes for her to run through. McCaskill gets her head up and she's looking for Barr on the end of her deliveries. Some of the key points we're watching this afternoon. Critical game in the SEC race for both teams. South Carolina in first. Vanderbilt trying to secure its spot in the top six. Underway from Stone Stadium on a Sunday evening, the second of three games in SEC play this afternoon. Temperature in the 80s. South Carolina in October, it's still plenty warm. And Vanderbilt has won here before. The last time South Carolina lost a home SEC game was to Vanderbilt two years ago. So as Jill mentioned off the top, these teams have played some tight ones. That was in overtime, as was South Carolina's win last year. Garris kept that one alive, but Barr can't clean it up. Here's Savannah McCaskill right off the bat. Tiana Tollison knocks it down, and it's almost a perfect start for South Carolina a minute in. We said McCaskill was going to be feeding Barr. It almost turned out to be the other way around. Long ball out of the back by South Carolina. We'll see if Vanderbilt can get settled here as this one goes out for a throw in. Tullison makes a bad decision to come here. She's not going to win that ball. It allows South Carolina to keep it inside the 18 and then gives up a bad deflection on McCaskill's shot. Vanderbilt's got to come out with a little bit more awareness of where McCaskill is on the field and where she can get into the box. 17th season at the helm of South Carolina for Shelly Smith, who has them just phenomenal defensively every year. Fourth time in the last five years, their goals against average has been under 0.7. Currently comes into the day at 0.53. And they almost always seem to find enough offense to get by. Obviously, at 12 and one at number three in the country, they're more than getting by this year. Last year, 21, two and one, ran the table in the SEC in the regular season, but lost in the semifinals to Florida came up one game short of reaching the College Cup, losing here to North Carolina, a loss that still stings. And McCaskill and her compatriots, there's only four seniors who have been at South Carolina for their entire run in the starting lineup, have their sights set on making it to College Soccer's Final Four this year. Vanderbilt, a different story. Simone Charlie inside for Conti. She's been an outside back most of the year. Occasionally played inside in a five back. Today she's starting at attacking mid. Quite a change, Jill. Yeah, Conte's gonna, you can see her just putting pressure on that South Carolina back line. She doesn't want to let them pick Vanderbilt apart. She's gonna be a massive role in wrecking South Carolina's rhythm tonight. Conte number five with the white headband fighting for the ball right now. South Carolina collects at the back. This is Tatum Malazzo. She's played much of the year at right back, but Jackie Schaefer not all the way back from a concussion yet. They hope to have her back soon, so Malazzo's still at center back. Here's Megan Kerrigan for South Carolina, looking for the run of Ryan Garris, and Tollison out to smother it for Vanderbilt. Darren Ambrose made that decision to move Myra Conti inside, his third year in charge of Vanderbilt. Got them to the SEC tournament in the first two. And he's also had to make a change in goal. This is the sixth straight start for Tollison. Because Caitlin Farner, who had been doing very well, top 15 in the country in save percentage, is dealing with an ankle sprain. Again, they do hope to have her back, but Tollison has had some very good moments and some inconsistent moments in her five games in net for Vanderbilt. 
That's a tough loss for Vanderbilt. Farner's been great all year. She's such a vocal presence. She's good on crosses. She really organizes the back line. And with her injury, Tullison's come in. She's had some bright spots and some definitely questionable decisions in the last few games. Uh, she, she's going to need to be on her A game tonight. Dominique Babbitt forced the steal, but Megan Kerrigan saw her pass intercepted by Christina DeZeo for Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt looking long for Simone Charlie. For years, that was the offense for Vanderbilt. Not so much these days, but they'll play it long every now and then. Long switch there finds Sarah Eskew, one of the freshmen in the starting lineup for South Carolina. 13 freshmen on the team. Most of the contributors are freshmen and sophomores. This is the veteran, McCaskill. Pass cut out by Amac. Garris, another freshman, won it back. This is Conklin to Dominique Babbitt. Space for Lindsay Lane. McCaskill ahead of her, trying to turn on DeZeo. Takes the shot from distance and finds the corner. What a strike, Savannah McCaskill does it again. It's a great little entry ball in here to McCaskill. She can turn anyone at anywhere. She sees Tullison off her line and just puts it in the hairpin. She's so good at checking off at defenders, getting the ball, turning and finding that space. Her vision is unreal, and you cannot give her time or space on that ball. Sixth goal of the season, 38th of her collegiate career for Savannah McCaskill. South Carolina quickly looking for more, and Vanderbilt able to break it up through DeZeo. Olivia Simmons on the far side for Vanderbilt. Turn that one over. Well, we asked Darren Ambrose, how do you deal with Savannah McCaskill? He said, we have to know where she is. We can't let her turn. And when we can, we need to get two players around her. And I'd say that was 0 for, well, 0 for 2. They knew where she was. I think one every, for three. every opponent's key to the game is to limit her chances on the ball, limit her possession. Do not let her get the ball and turn and run at you. And unfortunately, in that last play, that's what happened exactly to Vanderbilt. They let McCaskill on the ball. Too dangerous area of a field. South Carolina on the front foot. Garris, top of the penalty area, wants to go left. Tollison got hands to it and collects it after knocking it straight up. South Carolina, known to win games late. A lot of game-winning goals in the last 15 minutes or in overtime. In fact, half of these 10 wins have come late in the game. Getting it started early today and trying to finish the job almost in the early going. This is going to create an even tougher time for Vanderbilt because the game's going to get stretched at times. They're going to have to push on. Their, their game plan is going to have to change a little bit if they're going to want to get this goal back on a team that is very hard to score on. For South Carolina, we talk about trying to get a second one. Your keys to the game for South Carolina, Jill, already starting to pay off. Yeah, my keys to the match for South Carolina were keep the ball in the attacking half. That's one area of the game that they can definitely improve on is their ball retention and their decision-making in the attack of the half. They also need to do a good job of when they lose the ball, creating good pressure on the ball so that they stop Vanderbilt's counterattack. On the Vanderbilt side, uh, already you're, wor you're worried about it, down one nothing, And South Carolina on the attack right now. Barr at the D. Alexa Barr with the left foot. 2 nothing. South Carolina just like that. No slow start today. Gamecocks up 2 nothing in the first eight minutes. McCaskill coming back into the midfield, and like we talked about in the opening, Barr is going to attack that space that McCaskill leaves. She gets too much time. The goalkeeper not really set when she hits the shot. Not enough pressure on the shooter, and Barr just smacks it home. Sixth goal of the year for Alexa Barr. And as predicted, Savannah McCaskill playing provider. McCaskill two goals and two assists through the first six SEC games. That's good 
but it's been eclipsed by some of the higher scoring players in the conference. CC Kaiser, Bunny Shaw at Tennessee. She's showing today just why you think she might have a chance to repeat as offensive player of the year. That question was posed to you last night. I love Savannah McCaskill. There's so much more that she brings to this team than just goals and assists. She creates a tempo on the attacking side of the ball. She creates great deliveries for her teammates to potentially put away. She knows when to push as on the defensive side of the ball. She knows when to press and, and when to hold off a little bit. She, she does it all on, the, on both sides of the ball for South Carolina. Of course, in college soccer, two points for a goal, one point for assist. She's now 10 points behind the top spot in South Carolina history in career points, up to 109 in her career. And again, they hope to be playing deep into November, maybe to December, if they can make it to the College Cup. So Savannah McCaskill hoping to set South Carolina records, both individual and team this year, and has them off to a start that I don't think we saw coming. I don't think either of these teams saw this coming, but this is exactly what South Carolina wanted. They wanted to be able to score early and score often, and now it really puts the pressure on Vanderbilt of how they're going to play, what style they're going to play in the remaining of this game because they're down 2-0 to a team that I don't think has given up three goals this season. I, I got I to gotta answer that. They did give up three goals when they lost to Wake Forest, their only loss of the year. So that i gotta, I got to pay you back for that. No, thank you. <laughs> there are the numbers by Savannah McCaskill. You see 17 last year. She only had five coming into today, and Shelly Smith said, for a forward, the goals are the reward you get for all the other work. And we kind of had to remind her that we still value all the other work, even if she's not getting that reward. Good defending by Nia Dorsey to body off Garris and win a goal kick for Vanderbilt. And you talked about all the things McCaskill does otherwise. Today, on the score sheet, no problem. A terrific goal from distance to get us started six minutes in. And then a through ball to find Alexa Barr, which felt like an instant replay of the last time I was here in August for the second goal in the eighth minute. So that's where we are, 2-0 South Carolina. And Vanderbilt doesn't probably know this yet, but Auburn beat Florida earlier in the day to leapfrog Vanderbilt in the standings. And so obviously being down 2-0 early, Vanderbilt could be dropping in the SEC rankings this week. Caskell might have been offside. They're going to let it run out for a goal kick. And Vanderbilt making a substitution already 11 minutes in as you look at South Carolina. Terrific in regular season play, again, they lost in the semis last year. And dominant at home, you see the 29-1-1 one one in the last 31 matches. Ten in a row since that loss to Wake Forest. Back in August, really before they had everybody set, Grace Fisk, the outstanding transfer from Penn State, didn't start that game. She came in off the bench. They gave up three goals, which I think is the only time in the last two years that's happened. That's their only loss of the season. Vanderbilt with an early change. Brooke Colangelo, number 22, came off the bench. This is a great change for Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt in the first 10 minutes hasn't had possession of the ball. They haven't been able to connect passes, which Coach, Coach Ambrose says is what they'll find success in. So they bring in Colangelo, who's got a great soccer IQ. She's a good distributor of the ball, so she's going to try to help this Vanderbilt find some possession. Now she took out Myra Conti, who... Well, she hasn't played midfield for them. She's been starting it outside back. You feel for her. She's put in an unusual situation, which she was plenty prepared for. She told Darren Ambrose, I'm ready. Let's go. And she gets subbed out in 11 minutes. You have to sit out the rest of the first half when you're subbed this early. She can't come back in until the second half. That's a tough sub for me, but at this point, Vanderbilt needs someone on the ball who can try to connect passes through the midfield. They need to be able to play the ball in from defense into the midfield, connect some passes, little combination play, and try to find Charlie. And I think Colangelo is a perfect player to do that. So again, if you're subbed out in the first half, you can't come back in until the second. In the second half, everybody gets one chance to re-enter. College substitution rules, most of you watching, plenty familiar with them now, but there they are. And so Myra Conti already out for the rest of the first half for Vanderbilt. And Darren Ambrose is lining up another sub as well in the first 15 minutes. I mean, he took a gamble. He knew it was one. And I don't know that that was the cause of the two goals, but it hasn't paid off. 
Now we mentioned Auburn knocking off Florida 1-0. Kristen Dodson with the game's only goal in the 53rd minute. Another one of those veteran scores in the SEC. Second loss of the week for the 10th ranked Gators. And that is critical in the SEC title race, which we thought might be a three-horse battle with South Carolina A&M and Florida. Obviously a big hit for Florida's chances. Tennessee, glad to see that. Second conference loss for Florida. We'll look more at the implications of it as we go on. Florida lost Thursday night to Florida State in a rescheduled game. Florida State then went ahead and lost today to Wake Forest, two-handed South Carolina, their only defeat. Around the country we go. That one was offside, called against Garris. Here's the top portion of the standings. The top teams don't have to play in the early games in the SEC tournament. South Carolina in control if they can stay on course. Tennessee now is ahead of Florida after that loss, and Vanderbilt was just passed by Auburn. Amac out of the back for Vanderbilt, looking for Colangelo, and South Carolina with all kinds of time to set things up at the back. South Carolina, Jill, 19 players who dress regularly and see minutes in SEC play, five seniors, and then six sophomores and eight freshmen. I mean, it's an incredibly young team. They were picked to start the season at number three, and I said, no way, they have 13 freshmen. This is crazy. They took that loss to Wake Forest, 10 straight wins. They're right back up there. And this is the kind of identity that Coach Smith is really trying to instill in her team. One that's not just for one year, it's more of a legacy. When you step into a role, when you put on that jersey, you play with a certain expectation. You play with a certain standard. You know where you're supposed to be defensively. You're very organized and you're clean in possession and composed on the ball. So it's a seamless transition for these younger players into a team that already has such an established identity. We'll hear more from those freshmen get a little bit more about their life off the field as part of our halftime report. Savannah McCaskill, goal and an assist already. Cross was blocked by DeZeo, out for a Gamecock throw. South, South Carolina's had the ball so much, Vanderbilt hasn't been able to get this sub in. She's been up for three, four minutes. Sarah Eskew to throw in. McCaskill headed at end line, it's a goal kick, and now Vanderbilt will get to make that move. With the college hoops season coming up this week, we'll be in Nashville for SEC Basketball Media Days, Wednesday at 10 a.m., Thursday at 11 a.m., Wednesday for the men's, Thursday for the women's full coverage of SEC Basketball, both days streaming live on the ESPN app, I think. Just a few people here in Columbia will be interested in tuning in both days. Terrific seasons, uh, women's and men's, last year for the Gamecocks. You saw the substitution for Vanderbilt. Madison Elwell coming in for Hannon Eberts. Elwell has started on that left side at times this year, and so she's another first-half change for Darren Ambrose. Nia Dorsey won that one. Layla Azari, who has been terrific for Vanderbilt. We haven't had a chance to call her name much because they haven't had the ball. Helped keep it moving. This is Stephanie Amack, the graduate transfer from Stanford. And we thought Vanderbilt might be able to get it South Carolina on set pieces. They have a height advantage. They have a very good long throw in. They haven't really had a chance to use any of that. Grace Jackson, again, trying to connect some passes in the midfield for Vanderbilt, something Darren Ambrose said they hadn't been doing the last few games, and 
and Dorsey couldn't connect with Colangelo, and Darren Ambrose immediately points to his bench for a different right back. Vanderbilt has got to find a solution to getting the ball, keeping it, and getting technical players on the ball who can just be composed with a little bit of pressure. Applying pressure here, here is Layla Azari. Running at the defense, she had Charlie with her, but tried to go outside. Conklin broke it up, fist cleared for South Carolina. Babbitt won the header, second ball loose. Grace Jackson wins it back for the Commodores. Inside, Colangelo. Here's Lydia Simmons, often in the attacking role in a deeper role today. No Caroline Saltmarsh due to injury for Vanderbilt. They're hoping she'll be back in time for the SEC tournament. Amac can't connect on the far side with Olivia Simmons. Vanderbilt got off to a terrific start in conference play. But the second half of their schedule is brutal and ranked teams after ranked teams, Florida and South Carolina back to back. And there you see the first five opponents, they got some of the teams that are below them in the standings. Darren Ambrose happy they took care of business. The last five, really a tough stretch. Yeah, we talked to Coach Ambrose this week and he said that when they played Florida last week that they were a little timid, that they weren't playing their style. They weren't executed, that they were little bit of a deer caught in headlights. So that experience for them should translate for the end of their season, really preparing them to play opponents that are much uh, or higher in the standings than themselves to so be able to know that they can play, that they can play with a little bit of pressure on them and that they're composed enough to keep the ball in possession. South Carolina made its first change with Lauren Chang, a freshman coming off the bench, number 24, replacing Megan Kerrigan. Chang actually plays more minutes per game but still in that role coming off the bench, bringing terrific energy. And she has been a centerpiece of this South Carolina attack since her first game when she scored the clincher here. Upper 90 against UCF back in August. So that's number 24 on the ball right now for South Carolina, returning it to Grace Fisk, another newcomer, transfer from Penn State. I'm so excited to see Chang in the game. She's such an exciting player. She's so crafty. She can play with her left and her right, and she really does link up with Savannah McCaskill really well. You can see her making runs out of the midfield to press that Vanderbilt back line. Simone Charlie was the target there, and Grace Fisk got to the ball. The captain of England's under-19 national team able to clear it for a corner kick. And you see Charlie vocally trying to get her team back into it. She's not a vocal leader from everything we've been told. And Darren Ambrose said, I've started to see that come more from her this year. They blew a two goal lead against Missouri and her leadership helped them come back, win that game 5-3. First corner kick for either team, Lydia Simmons delivers. Charlie is there, heads it back across. Amac couldn't connect with it. South Carolina able to clear. Good corner kick and good set play for Vanderbilt to start. Charlie was looking for Azari there. Now Grace Jackson to Lydia Simmons. No relation to Olivia, who's on the opposite side of the field. Vanderbilt couldn't hold it. There's Nia Dorsey at the back for the Commodores. But we said set pieces could be a good opportunity for Vanderbilt, and that first one sure looked like it. And that's an experienced player there in Charlie not going for the goal, but actually trying to head it back across the frame for a running on, on uh, AMAC. Charlie was really late on that tackle, committed the clear foul. But we go back to the corner kick, or we, like, pardon, we go back to the foul. I'll get you a yellow card in some places. Uh, I think that's just a little frustration. Maybe trying to change the momentum of the game, just getting stuck in. Sometimes a tackle can do that for you. Chang with a chance to turn, running at the defense, has McCaskill ahead of her, and Olivia Simmons able to break it up for Vanderbilt. Anna Conklin, senior from Randolph, New Jersey, moves it to the South Carolina back line. We're joined now by Vanderbilt head coach Darren Ambrose. And Darren, obviously a rough start. What are some of the adjustments you want to see from your team as the game goes on? Well, 
Well, we'll get back to Darren if we can. I don't know that he could hear us on that instance. Dominique Babbitt looking for the run of Garris. Tiana Tollison out to get it for Vanderbilt. First Hawaiian student athlete Vanderbilt has ever had. She's from Kaiula Kona, Hawaii. AMAC trying to settle things down for the Commodores. Again, for either team to have a multi-goal lead in the history of this series, the recent history, is kind of unusual. Four of the last five have gone to overtime. Last year was the first time South Carolina had ever won in Nashville. There you see, South Carolina has had the better of it recently. But not by much. A couple ties in Nashville, a couple overtime wins, one for each team, and the only one that was separated by a couple goals have gone South Carolina's way, 4-1 and 3-0, and we're going back a few years to get to those. Vanderbilt does lead the all-time series, though, because from 95 to 2008, it was a much stronger program. South Carolina has really come on the last 10 years or so. South Carolina on the move right now. Barr looking for McCaskill. Tiana Tollison out. McCaskill controls on the end line. And Vanderbilt still trying to get it clear as we're joined by their head coach, Darren Ambrose. And Darren, obviously a tough start for you guys. What are some of the adjustments you want to see from your team? Well, we just gave it away right there. I mean, we just don't keep the ball long enough. I think we've panicked. Um, very disappointed with the start. I don't think we, uh, we looked a little bit off a step and intimidated, and you can't be that way against a team like this. Um, but we were built to chase, to possess the ball, and it's not what we've done. Coach, South Carolina does such a great job of just staying compact defensively, getting yep. 10 players behind the ball. How do yep. you draw them out and, and continue to keep possession? Oh, and that's what we did is we've sat back and, and tried to play underneath them now and keep the ball more at midfield. And when we've done that, we've gained their half, and um, we've got to be better in when we cross over halfway. I mean, but we're still giving the ball away way too cheaply right now. Um, you know, some of our upperclassmen have to step up and be a bit more composed on the ball. Thanks for your time, Darren. Good luck. Thanks. Lauren Chang with a little bit of magic while we had Darren Ambrose on. It led to a corner kick. Goes over Fisk. Garris at the back post. This is Chang. Into the penalty area. Lauren Chang, left-footed shot was blocked. We'll see if Vanderbilt can counter. Olivia Simmons pass blocked by Babbitt. And that'll be a Vanderbilt throw on the far side. And changes for each team now. Medea Harriet will come on at right back for Nia Dorsey. And one of the goal scorers, Alexa Barr, getting an ovation as she comes off to be replaced by yet another talented freshman, Luciana Zulo. And Zulo was the hero against Mississippi State, which scored in the 81st minute here in Columbia to put that South Carolina SEC regular season win streak in jeopardy. Zulo tied the game just a minute later in the 82nd, cleaning up a terrific play by McCaskill, and then won it with a great individual goal of her own five minutes into overtime. So, and it's not the first game winning overtime goal by a freshman this year. I think it's the third, in fact. So they've had some heroics from their youngsters. Zulo wide on the right, Chang in the middle, and Garris on the left. You might see Bianca Galassini come in for her as the half goes on. That's kind of the future of the attacking midfield for South Carolina next year. It's not a bad one already. It's not a bad present, no. <laughs> already a bunch of younger players stepping up and, and filling some of these big gaping holes and question marks that South Carolina had uh, moving into this season. And so far, they've risen to the occasion and just made a seamless transition into this team.
Conklin chested that one down. Lindsey Lane to McCaskill. Babbitt looking for Chang, an overshot her. Vanderbilt has been up and down this year. When they've managed to score a goal, they're 9-0. Oh. And when they don't get on the board, 0-4-1. Oh, it's been hit or miss, and so far today, as you can see, it's been miss. So there's Galassini replacing Garris. Familiar substitution pattern for South Carolina fans, to be sure. And Becky Rossett in for Layla Azari for Vanderbilt. If you needed more combativeness and someone who won't be intimidated, I think Becky Rossett's the right player for Vanderbilt. There's the scoring summary, Savannah McCaskill and Alexa Barr, both in the first eight minutes. McCaskill setting up Barr for the second one, six goals each now on the season. And much more importantly, two goals for South Carolina, as Jill mentioned, getting two against him is a Herculean effort that's only happened twice this year. Mississippi State scored two and wound up losing that game in overtime. Wake Forest had three in a win back in August. Come on, Chang, freshman, holding off Lydia Simmons, redshirt senior. Now McCaskill got cleaned out by Rossett. I said they wouldn't be intimidated, and she went into that tackle hard, and she's going to get a yellow card for it. Clock stopped by our referee, Joe Mendes. Maybe no yellow card. Maybe it's just a talking to, but he stopped the clock. Now McCaskill will make the most of it anytime she winds up on the ground. But it was definitely late. Definitely a late play, but that's what you have to expect when you're such a talented player on the ball is players are going to come in late and get some bad tackles on you. And Ross is just trying to be a, a, a game changer right now. As she goes into the game and be a spark for this Vanderbilt team that is desperate for a spark right now. McCaskill has spent much of the first half of this year training whenever possible, whenever her studies permit, with the U.S. under-23 national team. And in one of those camps back in January, the full national team was working out at the same site, and McCaskill was one of the few college players called up to the full national team on really short notice. So tremendous experience for her entering her final collegiate season, and certainly someone I think much of the NWSL will be eyeing come the draft in Philadelphia in January. NWSL, of course, crowning the Portland Thorns, champion for the second time yesterday in the final in Orlando, beating the regular season champs, the North Carolina Courage. And my partner, Jill Lloyden, member of the Sky Blue coaching staff during the season. We won't ask you to give away any draft secrets, but I think Yo, it's safe. Why are you telling people about McCaskill? I think it's safe to say <laughs> Andy Sullivan and Savannah McCaskill are on just a few draft boards. I'll never tell. <laughs> Lane, left-footed ball, looking for Galassini. Here's Rossett for Vanderbilt. Finds Madison Elwell, same club team in Pennsylvania. Elwell looking for the run of Rossett, who was at slightly a different angle. Tata Malazzo able to cut it out for Carolina. Eskew did well to deny Elwell any chance to turn there. Here's McCaskill able to turn. Anna Conklin. Babbitt and Lane. That time it's South Carolina with the late challenge. Babbitt the guilty party. Babbitt's actually two yellow cards away from suspension over the course of the regular season. Once you go to the postseason, you get a little bit more of a grace period. Well, you get more yellow cards to work with to be linear about it. And they want a different soccer ball. Darren Ambrose asking for a clock stoppage and not getting one. DeZeo going long out of the back. Rossett to the corner. 
challenge there with Malazzo. That's a foul flagged by the near side assistant, Olivia Urig. And so a free kick chance coming for Vanderbilt. We said they could be dangerous on these, and this would be the time to get one and get back in the game. Michaela Krasowski in South Carolina, first time I've called her name today, having to shield her eyes. Lydia Simmons delivery, headed out. Chang and Galassini able to clear for South Carolina. Now Mondays at 7 o'clock Eastern, it's the latest Thinking Out Loud, presented by Regions Bank with Greg McElroy and Marcus Spears. They'll talk all the football news of the week from both sides of the ball, and they want to hear from you via social media and live Collins. Thinking Out Loud, available streaming live on the ESPN app, Mondays at 7. Jackie Schaefer back in for South Carolina for the first time since the Ole Miss game. Missed two and a half games with a concussion past the protocol this week. And so South Carolina very happy to have her back in there. She's a freshman who enrolled in January and had been starting for them. Now here's the long throw we told you about. Olivia Simmons can reach the penalty area with these. Headed into the six and it runs all the way through. Tracked down by Medea Harriet. Offside. Well, it was either offside or a foul. I didn't see the flag go up, so I think it was actually a foul in the end. Well, South Carolina has done such a great job this night this evening about staying compact, getting a lot of numbers behind the ball, forcing Vanderbilt into some bad, bad decisions in possession, losing possession, and unfortunately Vanderbilt's only real chances have come from set pieces and long throws. Kaylan Boyd and Jackie Welch in for Vanderbilt. The tackle by Medea Harriet in the corner. It's out off of her for a South Carolina corner. One by Tatum Malazzo. Harriet does a great job of just getting her foot in there and blocking that as a South Carolina player, really avoiding that, that flank service. Thirty-fifth minute, South Carolina has been in control throughout. Goals in the sixth and eighth minute, the difference right now. As Chang sends that one out of play straight from the corner for a Vanderbilt goal kick. We looked at the numbers about talking about Vanderbilt's schedule. They actually have the hardest remaining schedule in the country in terms of winning percentage of their remaining opponents. So the SEC wins they already have in the bank. They started 4-0-1. They're going to be very grateful to have. But responding better against this type of competition is what Vanderbilt wants to see. And again, Auburn just won today. That's a team moving up in the standings, just moved ahead of them. A lot could be on the line when they play Auburn the final Thursday of the regular season. And this, this match still isn't over yet, and it's going to show a lot about who Vanderbilt is going forward against some of the top opponents in the country. And they're going to have an opportunity to go into the locker room and fix some problems and, and hopefully come out here and respond well in the second half. Olivia Simmons throw targeting Jackie Welch. She's doing a lot of pushing that went uncalled. Lydia Simmons tracks it down. Zayo right back to her. Good angle for Simmons to send it in. Madison Elwell for Vanderbilt. Got a step on Zulo. Going back post. Amac got a head to it. Michaela Krasowski, no problem reading it. But you see the danger Vanderbilt can pose when they can get wide and cross. And that all started from combination play. Change of points back out to Elwell and a great service on Elwell's left foot. She can serve a great ball and numbers getting forward. This is really, really encouraging to see for Vanderbilt. Yeah, we saw Tennessee there ranked 19th. Tennessee's only loss is to South Carolina, number three in the country, in overtime in a game where Tennessee hit the crossbar a couple times. So that might be another team that you see 
start to inch up as we go back to Vanderbilt's best chance of the day. Look at all the numbers in the box for Vanderbilt, and Elwell just whips in a really good service from the left-hand flank, and Amac getting on the end of that one. She was backpedaling, so couldn't get too much power on it. And she's pressured there by McCaskill, gets it away to midfield. Olivia Simmons forced a collision between Conklin, I beg your pardon, Galassini and Schaefer. It'll be a Vanderbilt throw in. That's the uh, man responsible for some of that noise. Yeah, they call this place the graveyard, built directly adjacent to the House of Peace Cemetery that's right behind our Vuvuzela player. And of course, over the years, uh, a lot of opponents' dreams have died on this surface, and they are trying to continue that in SEC play, where they have been unblemished, and they're hoping to extend it to the NCAA tournament, where they have lost twice on this surface in her career. Eliminated by UNC Wilmington in 2015 in the first round. And then last year, home field advantage with a chance to go to the College Cup. That painful 1-0 loss to North Carolina. Second in the country in attendance to BYU. So besides having a really good team, or when you put a really good team together with a really good atmosphere, it's a tough place to play. I think this team would be tough to play anywhere they play. They're so talented. And you can just see how good they are in possession and keeping the ball and composed on the ball. But Jill, the Vuvuzela, the graveyard, it's intimidating. <laughs> Tezeo's long ball finds Kaylan Boyd. Schaefer dealing with her. Boyd got a step, got away from a jersey pull, and Grace Fisk able to deal with Boyd's cross. There's Grace Fisk, added a little bit of aerial presence, transferring in from Penn State. South Carolina's not that big at the back, but more than anything, Shelly Smith said she's one of the calmest players I've ever seen. Vanderbilt certainly has improved in the latter portion of this first half. There they get numbers around McCaskill. Ball still fell to South Carolina. South Carolina, really tough schedule to prepare them for SEC play. They're number one in the country in RPI. Wins over UCF, South Carolina is their only loss. Over Notre Dame away, over Michigan. And you see the SEC teams, yeah, Tennessee should be up there. And Vanderbilt not in the picture because they don't have any signature wins over those teams you just saw. This latter portion of the SEC schedule is a chance for them. Again, it's only year three under Darren Ambrose, so they understand there's still progress to be made. But I love what he's done with this program so far. He's really trying to change the culture, change the identity, and create a team that really likes to play football, that really likes to keep the ball. We haven't really seen it from them yet, but they're able to. We've seen it from them this season. They can keep the ball. They like to play little combination passes in little triangles and diamonds all over the field. I'm still waiting to see that from them tonight, but if they can start to play that way, they can be a very dangerous team. Really haven't been at full strength all year for one reason or another as McCaskill races onto this one corner of the penalty area. Savannah McCaskill to the right foot, right to Tollison in the Vanderbilt goal, and she claps her hands in frustration. Savannah McCaskill, you don't want to allow her to get isolated 1v1 because all she needs is one yard of space, a little vision to, to look up and see where the goalkeeper is and have a hit. You have to make sure that you do not let her get isolated on the outside on the flank. That's given away to Zulo in the center circle. Galassini the target. Can't quite track that down. 
Hey, the college basketball season is right around the corner, and the SEC Network will be in Nashville this week. SEC Basketball Media Days, Wednesday at 10 Eastern for the men, Thursday at 11 Eastern for the women. Both days streaming live on the ESPN app. Wednesday and Thursday, SEC Basketball Media Days. It'll be in Nashville for all the Vanderbilt fans watching, and I think the South Carolina fans watching will have plenty of reason to check out what's in store for this year. I think a few banners are going to be raised. Schaefer out of the back looking for the run of Gallicini. Olivia Simmons there for Vanderbilt. Plays it to safety as we go under two minutes remaining in the first half. That wasn't a bad look there for Galassini because what that ball does is it, it creates more space for McCaskill to come underneath to get the ball. When you're stretching that back line, it leaves a lot of space in between the back line and the midfield, and that's where McCaskill likes to get the ball. She likes to get the ball in between seams, break lines, in between players. So that's not an, actually a bad look there for South Carolina. We saw Vanderbilt threaten from free kicks at one end. South Carolina will have a chance to do likewise here. Oh, that's in the penalty area. It's definitely in the box and 100% a handball of Medea Harriet there. They're lucky to get away with this uh, free kick outside the box. Wow. In real time, like the referee, I thought it was wide of the penalty area, but definitely not. Chang sends it in. Reservice, Zulo battling with Harriet. Great couple of freshmen there, and the throw in will go to South Carolina. Luciana Zulo. A couple of New Jersey players on this South Carolina roster. They pull them in from all over New Jersey, Vermont, Illinois, as well as the great state of South Carolina that provided McCaskill. And Megan Kerrigan, who started. Jackie Welch holding the ball up at midfield, drops it off to Boyd. Ten seconds to play in a first half that's been dominated by South Carolina. 12 and 1 on the year, trying to go to 13 and 1, and they are halfway there. They get two goals in the first eight minutes. Savannah McCaskill scored the first with a ridiculous shot from distance. Set up the second with a clean feed to Alexa Barr. And the Gamecocks in control at the half. We'll hear from their freshmen and we'll size up the SEC tournament field. All that coming your way at halftime. Savannah McCaskill has the Gamecocks on top 2-0 at the half.
Welcome to the SEC Network Halftime Report. Vanderbilt and South Carolina squaring off at Stone Stadium. And for South Carolina, such a big part of the season has been their 13 freshmen. Much more than just, of course, their on-field performance. Let's find out what those freshmen are like off the field. Oh, Zach Efron, for sure. Oh, gosh. That is Tom Hardy. Most people don't think these people are attractive, but... Uh, Tom Brady, definitely Patriot fan. Rihanna. I love Rihanna. Ben Stiller and Johnny Depp. Definitely. His movie that he just did, what is it called? Uh, I guess if I had to pick one, Ryan Reynolds. Baywatch. Baywatch. Zac Efron and Baywatch. Hot. <laughs> She's the background on my phone, my computer, and I have pictures of her on my wall. Uh, my celebrity crush would have to be Mila Kunis. I love watching movies that she's in, and she's pretty. Um, I would have to say Beyonce. Definitely Beyonce. Mm, Liam Hemsworth. Uh, probably... Ooh... James Franco. Harry Styles, for sure. One Direction all the way. <laughs> Lil Wayne. <laughs> uh, my dream job is to be a special education teacher. Um, a photographer. My dream job is to train dolphins and killer whales. Like a doctor for a sports team. I think it would be really cool to be like Metro Boomin. <laughs> I guess if I wanted to do anything, I would want to play soccer for as long as I could. Play soccer as long as possible. They're trying for much more and more here to come from Stone Stadium. We'll take a look at the SEC tournament and a first half recap when we return here on the SEC Network.
Oh, we're looking forward to the SEC tournament starting on Sunday this year, October 29th in Orange Beach. If the season ended right now, this would be the seedings and the bracket for the tournament. Jill, what stands out to you when you look at some of the potential matchups? I mean, I'm always a huge fan of South Carolina, but I think everybody is a huge fan of them because they're so uh, organized on defense. But I really like Tennessee as a dark horse. Florida, they play exciting styles. Uh, Tennessee had some question marks with Hannah Wilkinson graduating, but now with Bunny Shaw into the lineup, they've been great. We'll see what happens in the SEC tournament. All games available here on the SEC Network. Right now, South Carolina out to a 2-0 lead, trying to keep up their winning ways and stay in first. Welcome back to the SEC Network's coverage of college soccer from Columbia, South Carolina tonight. The conference's top team, South Carolina Gamecocks, leading Vanderbilt 2-0 at halftime. Number two in the country in attendance, averaging up in the high 2000s per game. And two in attendance right here with Jill Lloyden. I'm Jonathan Yardley. We've enjoyed this first half, but it wasn't what we expected, Jill. South Carolina usually leaves these things late, right? They score a lot of goals late in the second half. They jumped on Vanderbilt early. How'd they do it? They jumped on Vanderbilt, but is it South Carolina as advertised. Strong defensively, give the ball to McCaskill. She makes things happen. And that's exactly what she did in the first half tonight. She got the ball, played into her, was able to turn, had a little spit of space, found Tullison off of her line, and put it in the hairpin. Easier said than done. 
That's exactly what she does, though. She makes things look easy. And then here she is checking off the back line, getting the ball and finding Barr in behind this back line. And Barr does a great job of taking that space and putting it right under Tullison. Goal and assist for Savannah McCaskill. What can she and the young Gamecocks conjure in the second half? South Carolina 2, Vanderbilt nothing. Second half coming your way when we return. Welcome back to SEC Network's coverage of college soccer. Just a couple of weekends left in the SEC regular season, and number three, South Carolina, is leading it. Number one in the conference, trying to get to 7-0 and today. Here are the top six, and again, the top six don't have to play Sunday. It's a huge advantage in the conference tournament. Vanderbilt holding on to that number six spot right now, being passed by Auburn earlier today and trying to hold it from the competition that comes below them. Arkansas is in there as well, chasing uh, Vanderbilt. And then this is the bottom, the fight for some of the last few spots. Kentucky in there right now. They don't have a goalkeeper at the moment. Gave up five goals today with a field player in goal. A lot of things could still happen, Jill, for those last couple spots. A lot of things could happen. Three games left for all of those teams, and that's nine points up for grabs, and they get a couple wins here or there, then they find themselves right back in the mix. You'll see Mississippi State next week taking on Ole Miss here on the SEC Network, trying to make up some ground in that race. LSU Auburn as well next week. Among the games we'll be bringing your way here on the SEC Network over on ESPNU, and of course every game available via the ESPN app. Vanderbilt trying to come out much stronger in the second half. They gave up two goals in the first eight minutes of the game. Savannah McCaskill with a terrific goal from distance over Tiana Tolleson and set up Alexa Barr for the second. There is McCaskill climbing the South Carolina record books as we speak. 
And she boots it into the corner to start the second half. And right away we see Myra Conti back into the game for Vanderbilt, which is good to see. And back at a familiar position right back. She's been playing left or right back for Vanderbilt all year. Was asked to play central midfield today. Her coach felt comfortable with it. She felt comfortable with it. But she was pulled after 11 minutes with the team down 2-0. That's going to leave a bitter taste in your mouth. So you're glad she gets to get back out there and try and help make amends for Vanderbilt's poor start. Because it was a lot more than just her. Yeah, that was an unfortunate sub for Darren Ambrose in the first 10 minutes. But he, he needs Conte in this team. He needs her on the field. She's so dynamic. She's versatile. She's she's one of their, one of their most impactful freshmen this year. So to have her back on the field is, is super important for Vanderbilt's success moving forward. And a lot of the subs that he did make in the first half, he has kept on the field. Not all of them, but Azari and Charlie are back in the game. They started, whereas Elwell and Boyd are still in the game. They came off the bench. Ball turns over here, falls to McCaskill. In for Garris. And she tried to return it to McCaskill. Too many numbers there to clean it up for Vanderbilt. There's Myra Conti, freshman from Virginia. And she picked Vanderbilt over some big names in college soccer, including the University of Virginia. So a big get for them, and she has been an instant starter. Five starts at right back, five starts at left back, three starts at right center back when they played with three or five at the back, depending on your counting scheme. And her first today in the midfield. Now she's back to a more accustomed backline spot. Jonathan Yardley alongside former All-America goalkeeper Jill Lloyden. Watching South Carolina and Vanderbilt on a Sunday night. Second to last game in the SEC this weekend. South Carolina jumped out to an early lead coming into the day and has spent most of the season in first in the SEC. 12-1 on the year, 6-0 in conference play. Vanderbilt came in in fifth, has dropped to sixth with Auburn's win earlier. 9-4-1 on the season. 4-1-1 one one in conference play. McCaskill dribbled away from one, got it back to Tatum Malazzo, who has returned to the game, but at right back, South Carolina with Schaefer and Fisk, the normal center back tandem, returning to start the second half. Otherwise, it is starters back in. Cross couldn't connect with Garris, the target. Megan Kerrigan served it in, the transfer from Richmond. Malazzo there as well. There's Tatum Malazzo, one of those Illinois products. and She played both right back and center back for South Carolina, both last year and this year. And When she's had to play center back this year, Shelly Smith felt she'd made so much headway and was so much more comfortable in that spot they really didn't miss much of a beat. But Schaefer, with a little more height, helps out that back line when she's available. There's Schaefer. Trying to connect with McCaskill. Harriet caught her a little bit late. Advantage played. Barr's pass comes right back to her. Here's Alexa Barr. Babbitt's pass picked off by Conti. But again, Vanderbilt got in the passing lane but couldn't hold the ball. South Carolina comes away with it. Babbitt gets it back from Kerrigan. Stephanie Amack able to deal with it for Vanderbilt. Here's Simone Charlie for the Commodores under pressure. Still Barr looking for McCaskill. Her first touch from her. I think she left it there on purpose, but didn't know Elwell was in striking range. That's a foul against Kerrigan. Free kick to Vanderbilt. 
first five minutes of the second half, Jill, what are you seeing in, in terms of Vanderbilt's approach? Is it similar to what we saw late first? Well, they definitely come out with a little bit more bite than they did in the first half, a little bit more chippy. They are definitely have amped up the physical play already so far. They're putting more pressure on South Carolina, um, and they're, they're going to try to keep the ball moving forward. Madison Elwell wins a throw in for Vanderbilt that Medea Harriet will take. Harriet just five foot two. Floridian freshman who scored the only goal against LSU in the final 10 minutes to give Vanderbilt a road win. They are six and one on the road this year, by the way. Lost their first road game to St. Louis. Since then, six and zero oh on the road. So. And obviously in serious jeopardy of coming to an end. Zayo back over the top. Boyd is on side, and Krasowski came to knock it down. Didn't hold it the first time, but does come up with the ball. Tough chill as a goalkeeper when you only face one shot like Krasowski did in the first half to stay involved with the game. I don't think so. Not for her in, in particular. She is very focused. You can see her. She does her job very well, and she comes up with that one or two big saves a game, and she does a really, really good job of protecting the space in behind the back line. She comes she comes for balls, and she can clear with her feet. She also comes to claim. She's got a great presence about her. I'm really excited about, about this goalkeeper moving forward this year and into the rest of her f future as a Gamecock. Only a sophomore, Michaela Krasowski. Set the school record with a 0.43 goals against average last year. 11 solo shutouts to lead the SEC. She already has eight this year. Here's Alexa Barr on the move. Good team defending, forced her backward. Harriet into the tackle for a South Carolina throw. There you see Michaela Krasowski ranked right up there in the SEC as usual. Had five straight shutouts before they gave up two goals from crosses against Mississippi State. She's just been steady, really consistent for a young player. Even last year, her freshman season, she was very, very consistent. She was, her mistakes were very few and far between where she had to come in and, and fill the role of Sabrina D'Angelo, who's now currently playing in the NWSL and unfortunately lost yesterday in the championship. But she's definitely come in and, and done her job and done her job very well. Defense is what they do best at South Carolina. And that starts with Krasowski now in her second year as a starter. Dealing with a counterattack here. Here's Layla Azari. Two goals against Kentucky for Vanderbilt earlier this year. Her cross for Charlie dealt with by Grace Fisk. And Anna Conklin plays away. Not enough numbers there to really create trouble once the first cross was defended. When Vanderbilt is their best, it's when they're in possession and allowing time for numbers to get forward. If they're just playing a long ball in, it's tough, especially into the flank with just Charlie getting into the box because this is a very organized South Carolina team who likes to get a lot of numbers behind the ball. So if they're just going to play over the top and, and have Charlie be one versus four, the outcome is probably not going to be what they want. So if they look to find possession a little bit more, they can build and allow numbers to join the attack. Megan Kerrigan with the pink headband, switches for Garris. That pass broken up by Grace Jackson into a tough tackle with Kerrigan and holds it for Vanderbilt. Christina DeZeo, one of the Vanderbilt seniors that have of course endured a coaching change and she had some injury problems this year but has been able to return. They've had several others who they will not get back, most notably Danae O'Halloran who he said was such a great leader for this team, played outside back and play inside and will not get to play her final year of eligibility due to injury. They're without Caroline Saltmarsh today and Caitlin Farner, their goalkeeper. Both they hope to get back at some point this season. 
And everybody deals with injuries, but I think they've hit Vanderbilt this year more than South Carolina. Fifty-sixth minute, and South Carolina's been in control since early. A goal in the sixth minute and a goal in the eighth minute. Looking for the put-away goal. Lindsey Lane into the penalty area. Tees it up with the right foot. Denied by Tollison. Kerrigan's follow just wide. Almost a first South Carolina goal for the transfer. And this is definitely an area that I think South Carolina can improve on. They're up 2-0, and this is where they can start to put away teams. It seems as if though they've tried to take their, gas, their pet foot off the gas, but right here is a very good opportunity for them. Tullison giving up a poor rebound right into the middle of the frame, and Kerrigan not able to get that one on frame. Megan Kerrigan transferred from Richmond, but she's from the area, played club soccer with Savannah McCaskill in their teens and was a natural to join what was going to be a really young team and still is a really young team for South Carolina this year. Doesn't have the offensive production and again splits time with Chang in that midfield spot. Here's McCaskill, great footwork to get away from Conti. Saw the second level pass, Garris wasn't able to put it in a dangerous spot. Now Monday at 8 o'clock Eastern, you can catch the latest SEC featured, presented by Belk. Showcase some great stories from the past week across the Southeastern Conference. You can see it streaming live on the ESPN app. Monday at 8, SEC featured. Jackie Welch going to check back in for Vanderbilt. Replacing Madison Elwell. I like this sub for Vanderbilt. And Coach Ambrose has put Welch in the, in the game, who is typically known as a target forward. So Vanderbilt's going to look to play a little bit more direct into Welch's feet and have her hold the ball up, and they move Charlie out wide so that they can try to get her isolated, going 1v1, finding more time, more space, and not being oh. double and triple teamed. Sorry, I thought McCaskill was in for a second. The ball comes to Kerrigan. She tries again and again watches in frustration as it clangs into the chain link. Tiana Tollison retrieves for a goal kick. And Zayo just playing that, seeing the goalkeeper playing that ball back, should have played it to her left foot because she knew that pressure was just going to travel onto the goalkeeper. If she would have played it to the proper foot, then Tollison would have had an easy decision to clear that with one time. But she played it across her body and allowed McCaskill to get a sniff in there. Brooklyn Woodard in for the first time today, a freshman from Shelly Smith's neck of the woods in Vermont. She's over on South Carolina's left side, replacing Ryan Garris. Lydia Simmons won that one from Lane for Vanderbilt. Here's Grace Jackson. Myra Conti got a lot of air under that, and it's easy for Krasowski. We got this one started early. Savannah McCaskill lighting it up from about 20 yards away, finding the top corner back in the sixth minute. Her third SEC goal of the season, and then she set up Alexa Barr just two minutes later, less than two minutes really. Goals in the sixth and the eighth minute. I have Carolina in front. Woodard trying to chase this one down with Conti. Does keep it in. No harm, no foul says Joe Mendes, our referee, and it'll be a Vanderbilt throw. South Carolina's remaining schedule at Missouri, home against Georgia, and then closing the regular season at Florida. Here's 
Dominique Babbitt. She had Tolleson moving the wrong way, but sent it wide. So obviously that Florida game stands out on the remaining schedule for South Carolina, but this team has just been so consistent, other than the Mississippi State game. Haven't given up a goal in the SEC this year. As you see Lauren Chang coming back in for Megan Kerrigan. It's very surprising that they haven't done that so far because they only have one returner in the back line, and that's Anna Conklin. So everyone else is first-year players on the South Carolina team inserting themselves into the starting lineup, and it's been a very, very seamless transition because of the organization. Everybody knows their role. Everybody knows their job, and they do it very well. Boy, look at McCaskill run to get back defensively. She ran right past her own midfielder and her own outside back to help cover. So watch McCaskill get on her horse here. She does a great job of just tracking back on Medea Harry and putting pressure on her. And she puts that pressure on her, which forces her into a tough pass with Charlie. Look, she does it all over the field. Jill, forwards are always going to get judged on the goals and assists next to their name on the, on the sheet. But you and I have been around a lot of games, and the coaches will say, well, defense starts from the front. And everybody in the stands rolls their eyes. Come on, you don't pay the forward to defend. The effort and the positioning of that forward, how can it affect your opponent if you have a forward playing it the right way, the way McCaskill does? First of all, when you see a, one of the best players in the country tracking back to defend, that sets the precedence for every single player on this field. It sets the precedence of we're going to defend from front to back and we're going to bust our butts to do so. Near post, and Alexa Barr says, I didn't mean that, but she almost caught Tiana Tollison leaning. Alexa, if you hit it that well, just pretend like you meant it. Come on. But you made the point about, oh, we'll watch the Vanderbilt attack. It's Welch finding Layla Azari. Charlie running dead center in the box. Azari trying to find her. Krasowski got a touch to it. Still Vanderbilt. And they can't get a clean look. That was an important touch by Krasowski. She knew Charlie was making the run, and her center backs were beaten. Azari, another one for the future of Vanderbilt. Going to be terrific out there. Already a dangerous winger. Now Conti. Blocked by Woodard. This is Christina DeZeo from Kansas. Her pass picked off by Chang. Now McCaskill, one against three. I wouldn't bet against her. On the run with Alexa Barr. Skips around Harriet. Savannah McCaskill floats it back post. Brooklyn Woodard can't do much with it. She's fun to watch, though. And you can see Azari just playing that ball into a Charlie who's beat both center backs. And Krasowski does a great job to come out and block that ball. And then McCaskill on the other side, she gets the ball in midfield and she takes on three and four players and, and tries to find that player on the back post. You talked about the effort that McCaskill always gives and the impact that leaves on other players. Just within the game, though, I want to go back to that. What can a forward do defensively to affect the opposition? Defensively, the forward's job is really to shape play and make it predictable and to force it up one side or another and force the opponent into tight situations where their number's up and can win the ball back and really pressure their opponent uh, higher up the pitch, which can lead to chances higher up the pitch, uh, as well as their job isn't necessarily to win the ball. Their job is to put pressure so that their team can win that second ball. McCaskill, maybe nobody better as a forward than that than she is in the college game at pressuring and forcing a back line to put the ball where they don't want to. I think sometimes she does it because she gets a little frustrated and wants the ball more. <laughs> she plays this one through and the offside flag is up. And McCaskill can't believe it. Look at the bottom of your screen, Savannah McCaskill, livid. She says, I know that was on when I played it. I kind of agree with her. 
her vision is so good. That little one-touch pass in there. I mean, we don't have a clean look at the line, but the defender was five, three seconds after the ball was played, the girl was still onside. I think that's the wrong call there. Oh, that's, she's on. 100% Zulo's on in that situation, getting in that space between the center back and the outside back, and the vision for Savannah McCaskill to just see that and play that on one, one touch is incredible. Andy Sullivan from Stanford is the presumed favorite to be the number one pick in the NWSL draft in January. She gets call-ups to the senior national team when she's healthy. I don't know if uh, who exactly is the company for McC with McCaskill in the race for number two. And as you said, it probably depends on who it winds up with the pick on draft day. But it's going to be interesting to watch her transition to the next level. Will she be a forward at the next level? Will she play underneath? What kind of system will she end up in? There's very few rookies who can come in and create an, an immediate right. impact in our league. This year, Ashley Hatch has come in. She scored seven goals for North Carolina, but that's very few and far between for players. Uh, but I think McCaskill has a bright future in the league. Given the right coach and the right amount of time and someone who can develop her and teach her the runs, and I think that she has a really, really bright future because she's so determined. Her, her mentality is exactly what you want at that next level. And she's gonna get a very rare breather you can never tell for sure because she'll walk that same way but McCaskill is coming out uh, she's only come out for six minutes for the entire SEC season obviously in non-conference she came out a little bit more Lauren Jankowski replaces her here we're joined by South Carolina head coach Shelly Smith Shelly you do get a chance to rest Savannah McCaskill for once there uh, what have you been pleased with uh, in this one aside from the scoreline uh, just our you know, the way we've had possession, um, I think it's been very good. I thought the first half was very good. This, this half, a um, little slower. Um, credit to Vandy with some good pressure, but we've got to make better decisions um, and be more positive, uh, a bit quicker to play in behind when we need to, play to feet when we need to. So we started this a little bit slow, but uh, I'm happy the way we're starting to progress a little bit more and get some chances and, um, and just control the game. Obviously, we're up two goals, so we want to take care of that first and then look for goal opportunities when we can. Coach, a lot of new faces in this lineup, a lot of new players. Who are you looking for right now while McCaskill's off the field to really step up and lift this team? Well, all year, all the players that have come in have done jobs for us. Um, you know, we, we, we have had a lot of freshmen come in and score game-winning goals. We've had them come in and give us lots of minutes. We have, uh, you know, a mix of players out there right now. I mean, it, it, it's just a team effort every time. And Savannah gives us... Um, Obviously, such a, a weapon up top, but all these players are capable of scoring goals and, um, and, and getting behind the defense. So, um, you know, hoping to keep possession and keep pressure on Vandy while she has a chance to rest. Shelly, thanks for your time. Good luck, of course. Right. Thank you. Shelly Smith, the South Carolina boss, getting again a rare chance for McCaskill to rest with a 2 nothing lead here. They've played so many one goal games during this 10 game winning streak. And so it's Jankowski up top, a junior. With Woodard on the right, Chang in the middle, and Zulo on the left, all freshmen. Babbitt and Lane almost never leave the field. The two holding midfielders, one a senior, one a redshirt senior. Vanderbilt preparing substitutes as well. This is Olivia Simmons, and she'll win a throw. We'll see Paola Ellis for the first time. And there's Becky Rossett coming back in as well. Here's Ellis targeting Azari, who's able to turn. And it runs to Nia Dorsey on the far side. Her cross drifts. Good touch by Krasowski, and it's out off of Vanderbilt head for a South Carolina goal kick.
good little ball in here by Dorsey, but Krasowski does a great job to come out and get a, get a hand on that and push that away. And these are the types of chances that teams will create against South Carolina because they don't really have the patience to try to break down their back line. So they try to settle for outside services or long balls over the top. And, and that's where Krasowski is really, really shine for me. She's only five foot six, which doesn't jump off the pages to you for a goalkeeper. And you don't feel like that's really going to be a troublesome spot. She seems to handle things in the air okay. For the two years that I've been watching her, I haven't said to myself, wow, she didn't yeah. get that because she was a smaller goalkeeper. She has a presence, and she just has that look in her eye like you don't want to mess with her. <laughs> she, she's just got a great presence for, her, for herself. And we call that the Jill Lloyden look, right? <laughs> Not all goalkeepers are crazy. Just some. <laughs> just, just 98%. Just the really good ones. <laughs> Seventy-first minute, and South Carolina still in control of this one. But you heard Shelly Smith not completely satisfied with the second half performance. This is Luciana Zulo. She can use those step overs. It's more than just flash. But she committed a foul after the ball ran away from her that time. Christina DeZeo will leave it for Stephanie Amack to restart. Here's Rossett with her back to goal. Jackie Schaefer right on her, poked it away. Babbitt got it to Woodard and now gets the return pass. Lauren Chang in the middle. Oh, she had Babbitt. Went the opposite way, and Nia Dorsey able to defend for a corner kick. <laughs> Dorsey alert to the run on her side. I thought Chang missed an opportunity to play that one near side instead. Rebecca Cook comes on for Tata Malazzo along the back line. You can see she's battled a couple of injuries. Bianca Galassini also comes back in. Third corner kick for South Carolina. Lindsey Lane into the six. Tollison with a good catch. They were really happy with how she defended the crosses that Kentucky threw at her last week and handled that cleanly as well. Coach said that's one of her strongest parts of her game is being able to come out and, and have a great presence on crosses and come and claim crosses. However, I don't think that Vanderbilt has done a great enough job of forcing play out into the flanks. They've gotten beat twice through the middle. Um, if they could just do a, a little bit better of forcing it outside and forcing it into Tellison's strength, and it will be a lot harder for South Carolina. Sun setting on a Sunday night in Columbia. And as usual, the Gamecocks up on the scoreboard. They don't lose in this building very often. Certainly not in regular season play. It's the postseason bug that's gotten in the last couple of years. There's a look at the state fair going on. We understand we're missing some real good eats over there. Maybe we can sneak over afterward right near the campus. I'm not going to say which coach posted uh, a tweet about donut burgers that got me thinking, but her first name rhymes with Relly. 75th minute, her team is in front, South Carolina. It's Nia Dorsey on the run. Looking for Welch inside, but Lindsay Lane was right with her. Lane, whose socks never seem to come above mid-shin, dealt with an ACL tear in each knee during her college career. Redshirt senior now and part of some serious success for South Carolina. Olivia Simmons throwing in in front of that Carolina bench. You can see they're wearing pink tonight. They at least spared us the pink jerseys. 
but the t-shirts are still everywhere. There you see the shot total. A little bit of domination. Stephanie Amax header, the only Vanderbilt official shot on the day. I mean, Joe, we've seen South Carolina dominate the conference for the last two years, and of course very good before that as Olivia Simmons goes forward and has her pass picked off. Vanderbilt does hold it here. Lydia Simmons brings Stephanie Amack into the play. They wanted to play her in midfield, kind of needed her to play center back. Drops it off for Simmons to the other Simmons. Good switch by Rossett. Azari's there and has an overlap. Nia Dorsey calling for it, gets it, is onside. Low cross, hit a South Carolina player in the box. Babbitt is still dealing with the effects of that as the ball comes back in and runs out for a corner and is Dominique Babbitt okay. And this is the kind of play that we really have seen from Vanderbilt all season, which has had allowed them to have such great success as some combination play through the midfield, changing the point of attack and getting Dorsey into the attack and getting a service in the box. Second corner kick for Lydia Simmons. See if they count that as a second shot. It didn't get very far. Galassini able to clear. But Jill, we've seen this South Carolina team dominate the conference the last two years. The postseason success hasn't quite been there. Where are they vulnerable for the teams looking to knock them off? SEC tournament, NCAA tournament. What are, what are some areas Shelly Smith's still got to have some concern about? There aren't many. There aren't many. Um, they're tough to beat. They, they don't give up very many goals. But this is kind of where I want to see them improve is finish teams off and don't let teams have a sniff at coming back because this Vanderbilt team is very good and they are dangerous. Luciana Zulo touches around one defender. Running with Jankowski. Stephanie Amack too experienced right there. Savannah McCaskill standing on the sideline waiting to come back in. So her rest is probably done for the day. As Vanderbilt continues forward with Azari. Game opening up here. Paola Ellis got there, but her layoff went to a different target than she intended. Jackson to Lydia Simmons. Olivia Simmons coming up for the overlap. Yeah, she's naturally right-footed. Wanted it on there, sends it in. Rossett was challenging. South Carolina able to deal with it. Cook back to Krasowski, her clearance goes right up the middle. And Amax settles, Vanderbilt on the front foot right now. Trying to get one instead up a frantic finish. Lindsey Lane at full stretch, won the ball, no foul called. Paola Ellis knocked down two. And Lane bangs it away in frustration. Eskew's over at left back. She started on the right. And South Carolina not really able to maintain possession right now. They just knocked it long. Bringing it all the way back to Krasowski. So you feel there are vulnerable spots. Obviously, they don't want to let teams hang, hang around. I think one of their bright spots that probably go very unnoticed are Babbitt and Lane. They do a great job of sitting on top of that back four and really creating the tempo. The next question mark is, can they keep the ball in the attacking third and really make good decisions? Move that back four and create Vanderbilt to make mistakes and then exploit them. Sometimes I think they see the goal or they see McCaskill and they make what I call a McCaskill pass where <laughs> she's always on almost because she's Luciana Zulo from deep. One step over, one hit. And goal number three for South Carolina. That was a McCaskill shot if I've ever seen one. <laughs> Great little touch inside and just lays it up on her right foot. Finds Tullison off her line. I love it. She's running at defenders. Little bit of deception cheekiness to get the off balance of defender. Finds the back of the net with an incredible right-footed shot. 
Boy, did that turn out to be the right decision for Luciana Zulo. She had the game winner with step overs to her left against Mississippi State. Her fourth goal of the season with step overs to her right against Vanderbilt. And should have put this one out of reach. My biggest question mark was can they put teams away? And as I'm talking about it, they put one in the back of the net. Incredible individual effort there by Zulo. Savannah McCaskill is back, as you see from our substitution tracker, which is going to give you way more information than I am because I've lost track of it. All the players who are back in the game we've seen before, as Charlie is called offside. And there is the tone setter for South Carolina. Assuming this score holds up, she would tie the South Carolina record for game-winning goals, 16 in her career. She's also one shy of the record for game-winning assists in South Carolina history, rewriting the record books. Ryan Garris and Medea Harriet will re-enter. Garris for South Carolina and Harriet for Vanderbilt. We told you South Carolina's remaining schedule for Vanderbilt. We've talked about it. Ridiculous back half of the now 10 game SEC season. First five games, 4-0-1. The last five games right now staring at 0-2 with games against Tennessee at A&M and home against Auburn to go. And as we mentioned, that last Thursday night game against Auburn could be the biggest game of their season. It may only affect seeding at that point, but it could affect whether or not they have to play Sunday in the SEC tournament, which is a big challenge to make a run in that tournament playing from your Thursday regular season game, Sunday SEC tournament. And if you win, you got to play Tuesday against somebody who's fresh. It's all in Orange Beach, Alabama, starting October 29th, all of it on the SEC Network. So we hope you'll join us for that. Jill will be there. Here's McCaskill holding it up and turning. And threading a pass to Barr, who couldn't hold it. Barr, who scored the second South Carolina goal, part of great soccer family in the Atlanta area. Her father, Alex, is a Honduran professional who played for the Atlanta Silverbacks. And the family stayed in Atlanta. Alex is here. She plays internationally for Honduras. And her younger brother is currently at the Under-17 World Cup in India, where Honduras has advanced to the round of 16. And Alex also plays in the Atlanta United Academy. She has come into her own, starting for the first time this year and getting goal number six today. Chang looking for the run. DeZeo read that and wins it back for Vanderbilt. McCaskill looking for more, trying to split two defenders and she thought she was fouled. Joe Mendes didn't agree. Amac finds Paola Ellis. Simone Charlie outside of her. That's deflected by Malazzo. Grace Fisk settles things down for South Carolina. Babbitt playing it through for McCaskill. One-on-one -on -one against Amac. This is fun. Youth national team players against each other. McCaskill to her left foot, denied by Amac with a sliding tackle. She got some help and then made the perfectly timed slide to get in McCaskill's way. You got to love this. This is what McCaskill does best. She takes players on, but really, really good defensive effort there by Amac just getting that little bit of toe in there that blocked 
really good defensive play there. Tomorrow night, 7 o'clock Eastern, you can catch the latest Thinking Out Loud presented by Regions Bank. Greg McElroy and Marcus Spears will be talking all the football news of the week. They want your participation via social media and live call-ins throughout the show, so check it out. Monday night, 7 o'clock, Thinking Out Loud, also streaming live on the ESPN app. Lauren Pinkham into the game for the first time for South Carolina. Rebecca Cook and Megan Kerrigan return. Kayland Boyd was anticipating a run. Olivia Simmons was not. <laughs> that ball never went out of play. The fourth official blew the air horn anyway, so we play on. Two games in a row now, Jill. Vanderbilt comes out against a top 10 team, a team that's got a tradition of winning and winning big in the SEC, winning consistently. And Darren Ambrose feels like they came out intimidated. He thought they had a great week of practice in between. He didn't think it would be an issue, so how can they address it going forward? Because they've got more ranked teams to play. Well, they definitely didn't have the start that they would have wanted to have. But they've got to get back to executing their game plan. Their game plan is one that has proven to work over the course of the season. They've got to get back to maybe one and two touch tempo and rhythm and being comfortable with a little bit of pressure on their back. Being comfortable when they're, when they're getting pressured by South Carolina players and just being composed enough to keep the ball, play a little rhythm passes, little combinations, switch the point of attack and, and get numbers into the attack. But what happens is sometimes in this game, they've gone down early and they need to make sure that they come out and they're able to execute that game plan of just keeping the ball in possession. The decision to start Myra Conti at center mid, again, not so much her individual performance, but the way it contributed to the team effort, does that go down as maybe I wouldn't do that again if you're Darren Ambrose? They had a game plan in the beginning to put pressure on South Carolina's backs. South Carolina was easy, able to play out of that pretty easily, and that's how they generated their chances. So maybe looking back, they might take a different approach. Um, they've taken a different approach in the second half of this game. and You have to take chances, though, if you want to knock off a top team. I had to ask. It's just such a departure from where we've seen her play. And uh, some coaches like to try different looks to start the game. Darren Ambrose is one of them, and sometimes it pays off big. And today, again, I don't know that it's directly responsible for the two goals, but certainly he kind of called that off pretty early in the half. Well, it worked for Mississippi earlier this season. They were able to put a lot of pressure on South Carolina. They were up 2-1 late in the game, and unfortunately they ended up losing, but they did have the game plan of pushing pushing pressure uh, onto South Carolina's back line and not allowing them to dictate that tempo. Long ball here, and last came off of Harriet for a corner kick. And we told you college basketball season right around the corner, and we'll be at SEC Basketball Media Days in Nashville. Wednesday, 10 a.m. Eastern, we'll have the men. Thursday, 11 a.m. Eastern, the women. Coaches and players on set with the SEC Network crew in Nashville. Both days streaming live on the ESPN app. Wednesday and Thursday, Basketball Media Days from Nashville here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Eighty-eighth minute here, South Carolina in control, up 3-0, two early goals. Savannah McCaskill and Alexa Barr, and a late one from Luciana Zulo. The scoring in the game, and it's really never been in doubt, only one shot forcing a save from Michaela Krasowski. This is the second game of three conference games on the SEC slate today. We told you Auburn beat Florida earlier in the day. The 10th ranked Gators 0-2 this week on a Kristen Dodson goal. And then Alabama and Mississippi State playing in Tuscaloosa right now over on ESPNU. So that's one of your options after our game ends. South Carolina number three in the country and holding steady ever since that loss to Wake Forest back in August. Number one, Stanford. Number two, UCLA, already with wins this weekend, both by a goal. So you'd expect South Carolina will hold steady at three. The top eight, all with wins this weekend, assuming this score holds. Nine, 10, and 11, though. Texas, Florida, Princeton, 
and even 12 if you want to go down to Ohio State. We're talking coaches poll here. All suffered losses, so there could be some movement coming up. Lydia Simmons trying to hold off Lauren Jankowski. Foul called against Jankowski. Vanderbilt going forward. Here's Rossett trying to leave it for Simone Charlie into the penalty area. Charlie onto her right foot and fired it high, just leaning back as she let the ball go. Only the third Vanderbilt shot of the day, and that sums it up. She gets in a good space in the field and creates a little separation from her defender. Obviously, she would have that back if she could and put it on the inside of the post, but it's a good look for Simone Charlie in the second half. South Carolina closing in on a 19th consecutive SEC regular season win. Their last game of the 2015 regular season, all 11 last year, and seven in a row to start SEC play in 2017. We're gonna go to 13 and one on the season, and winners of 11 straight. South Carolina scores two times in the first eight minutes and rolls to a 3-0 win over Vanderbilt on this Sunday night. 11 straight wins for Shelly Smith and the Gamecocks. And another shutout as well for that vaunted defense. Seven SEC games, six shutouts. And Savannah McCaskill, one of the stars of the show tonight. Going to be joining us shortly as the teams mingle and greet the officials afterward. And we take a look back at how this thing started. Savannah McCaskill in the sixth minute, Jill. She's going to turn and she's going to hit this top corner. She turns and she has too much time and space. You cannot give this player that much time and space on top of the box because she will punish you every time. Savannah McCaskill joining us. Uh, Savannah, congratulations, first of all. You guys during this winning streak have made a habit of deciding things late. What led to the hot start this afternoon? Yeah, we just want to get better at imposing ourselves on other teams earlier in the game. So we just all week prepare to um, just come after them. And we're being at home. We just had nothing to lose. So we just came out strong and then was lucky enough to put it away early. On another hot streak this year, uh, what's different about this team as compared to last year? Yeah, um, we had a lot of freshmen come in, so we had to have them step up off the bat, and they did a phenomenal job to come in and fill gaps that we, uh, were left by seniors that graduated. So just doing a great job for them to step in and then the upperclassmen to kind of take them under our wing and just make sure everyone's together going forward. Savannah, I want to ask you about the goal. When you get facing up against a defense like that, how are you making the decision of do I hit it from here or do I get in closer, and what did you see on that one today? Yeah, um, I saw the keeper that was a little bit off her line, so I decided to go ahead and test her early, and um, I caught her off her line, and I was able to put it over her head. Um, but I always just, you know, looking to go forward early. And if it's on, I go. If not, then I keep the ball and try to keep it moving. Savannah McCaskill, we enjoy watching you. Congratulations. Thanks so much. A goal and an assist for McCaskill. She got it started early in the sixth minute, able to float this one over Tollison. She did more than test her. Dezeo just gave her a little bit too much space there. She looks up and she's going to punish you. Then McCaskill turn provider. She's going to play this one through for Alexa Barr, and she still had some work to do. And that's the greatest thing about Savannah McCaskill. She does it on both sides of the ball. She's there creating, and she can score. She does a great job to set up Alexa Barr on that goal. South Carolina kind of cruised along from there, and then in the 80th minute, one of their freshmen, Luciana Zulo, got to her right. Luciana Zulo, just a little bit of creative deception there. Just a little step over, creates a little pocket, and has a phenomenal shot with their right foot in goal. What a fun afternoon for South Carolina. They get another win, 3-0 over Vanderbilt. For Jill Lloyd and our entire crew, I'm Jonathan Yardley. Arkansas-Alabama football replay is next. So long from Columbia, South Carolina does it again. 19 straight in the SEC regular season and counting. <laughs>